Hey everybody, welcome back to Truck Ownership 101. Class is now in session. Today's video is going to be all about auto stop. And I know that's a hot button for some people. Some people, most people hate it. <laughs> it's inconvenient. It uh, shuts your truck off at what seems to always be the worst possible time. You're about to merge into traffic or you're just pulling up in your driveway and you're stopping, coming to a stop just to put the thing in park and the truck stops and then kicks back on. I get it. I'm not a fan of it either. That's why, spoiler alert, at the end of this video, we're getting rid of it on my truck. Um, but I'm going to defend it a little bit. You know, I'm, I have a gas guzzling truck and it's terrible for the environment. You know, the, a lot of the emissions, um, you know, I can see probably my next truck or the truck after is probably going to be electric. Just the way things are going. I'm look, actually looking forward to that. They're, they're, those trucks are looking pretty cool, but you know, so if my truck has to turn off once in a while to cut back on emissions, if all the trucks do that, it helps out a little bit. You know, I got a, I got a one and a three year old. I don't want this uh, you know planet going to crap. So, you know, I get it. I'm, I'm, I, I understand why they're doing it, but for me in my particular situation, it just doesn't make sense. I live and work in town. I go through three roundabouts on my way to work. That's it. No traffic lights, no, uh, you know, no rush hour traffic, stop and go, that kind of stuff. It just, it doesn't make sense for me. All it does is when I get to a stop sign for that fraction of a second, waiting to merge into traffic, it stops. I let my foot off the brake. And to be honest, it actually messes with my merge. So, you know, what I would like is to be able to flip the default. I would still want to be able to use it. If I know I'm going through some rush hour traffic, if I know I'm going through a bunch of stoplights or I'm going to be stopped for a while, I'd like to be able to have it, you know, like uh, reduce some emissions, maybe save some fuel economy. I don't really think it's going to save me that much, but you know, maybe going through a, a drive through and it's nice to have it shut off just for that little bit when I'm taking my place in my order. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really buy into all the hype as far as it's going to trash your battery and, and trash your engine. You're going to go through all that parts. I mean, the hardest time on your engine is when it's up here in Minnesota, it's 20 below and you start it up, you know? Um, and that's not the case. Those autos, you can, you've obviously know that sometimes auto stop works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's, detecting all that is the engine at warm enough temperature to shut back off uh how's your battery status if you're you know if your ac is running how's the temperature in your vehicle there's a ton of factors that go into whether it turns on or off and you know the technology and the starters and stuff knowing that this is all in place it's i don't necessarily think me turning this off is saving my vehicle but i just think for my driving habits for my convenience i i want to switch it i want the default i still want to be able to turn on and off when i want but i want default to be off so how do we do that well you're gonna have to talk to my friends over at auto stop eliminator and they will get you a, a little module uh, that will uh, insert into the wiring uh, that goes in between the button and the vehicle and get it to automatically uh, save your preference. So whichever one you, you, whichever one you left it is where it's going to stay, which I think that's, that's ideal. I didn't even think that was possible. Um, you know, I talked to Travis over there and he actually sent me, so this is the first look you, anybody's going to get at this thing is the prototype of the new version of the auto stop eliminator. So this is version AE030 instead of uh, 004. So um, just more refined, um, kind of just updated. So if you've kind of been on the fence of should you pull the trigger on getting one or not, new versions out. <laughs> uh, you know, I, like I said, it, it looks cool. I like, I'm kind of a techie guy, so I kind of like seeing the cutting edge stuff. So I really appreciate them sending me this out. Uh, they also sent me this, uh, the original version, which functionality wise, they're identical. So you know, whichever one you got, they're going to work just the same. It's just, I'm kind of techie. So I think that's cool. Uh, but what's it take to put it in? I, you know, if you've watched, if you've done any research in this, it may seem a little intimidating because you do kind of got to tear your truck apart. Um, uh, but, um, I will link the video that Travis made and it is phenomenal. I followed it to the T it made this go as a breeze. The one thing I'll supplement in this video is just maybe giving you a few more camera angles of what things look like when they're apart. Um, I think that's really helpful when you're pulling and yanking on stuff to know exactly what to pull on harder because that it's just a simple clip or, you know, that this actually is a tab and it's supposed to go sideways. So don't pull on that. You know, um, it's all explained well in the video, but I think just some extra camera angles, some extra pictures might help. So, uh, let's take a look at the, the mess I've made here in the truck. Okay, here we are. Um, you know, obviously I've done all the work, uh, already, um, 
stuff has been all torn apart. I kind of lightly place things uh, back into, into place, but as you can see, we've done a little, little modification. Um, and, and as far as the sequence of when you tear this stuff apart, uh, the first is going to be the side panel. Uh, pretty simple. There is a seven millimeter uh, bolt there, a little a door that you, you pop out to get it. Um, and then you just start going around, you start at the front and you start coming all the way around back into here and you're just pulling straight out. And again, these little clips, how they work is just pressure when you pull straight back and they pop right out. The one spot you got to watch out and it's mentioned in the video, but I just wanted to give you a nice little camera angle of it is this tab right here is obviously not a spot where you want to yank. Um, it could potentially snap that tab. So, um, like I said, all mentioned in the in the teardown video. Uh, start here, work your way around the back. This spot's last, and then it slides this way. Obviously, you can see how that tab works, and you just leave that loose here. All you got to do is be able to get at other stuff. So that just stays right there. Really not that hard. Over here, same exact thing, except there was no 7 millimeter screw in the front. So you just start going around the horn again, all the way back here. Uh, I recommend having a flashlight with you just so you can um, get your eye in there to make sure all the tabs are clear before you do that again slide because once again you have another tab. All right. Once those are out, the next step was to take apart the top of this console and they use some of these, you know, non marring tools. I will link this set. In the description as well i've had a lot of good luck with it uh, for all my mods you've probably seen it in some of my previous videos um, and you get under here you pop that up you get under this one pop that one up um, you slide this up ever so gently because there is a wire to disconnect um, potentially more if you have the uh, extra bells and whistles in here um, like the auto like the uh, wireless charger but for me uh, there's just that one plug which is kind of cool this is the spot if you're ever wondering uh, how do you start your truck if the proximity sensor isn't in the vehicle and you just rest it there how does that work well there's a wire in there detecting it okay Ugh. now the next piece is this bottom one and i'll admit that's probably the one that i had to struggle with the most you know like i said the video is great Tells you exactly what to do, um, some good tips. But like I said, it was just tough for me to pull. And with the plastic being kind of narrow here, I really didn't want to yank too much on one side or the other and break anything. But um, just to help you out, as you can see, uh, a straight pull this way, you know, keep it horizontal. Uh, when you pull, don't twist or yank or lift up or down. As you can see, those five tabs are meant to come straight back i guess would be my pro tip there um you know if you get one side to pop out again try not to make that a pivot point and yank you could easily snap that so you know a little support on each side when this pops off and then like i said if one side's struggling more than the other get one side out work together on that one again support that middle piece and then that'll come out too so like I said, that was the one i definitely fought with the most next came this panel and if you've watched my videos, um, you know, I took this off and wrapped it once, um, not with the best <laughs> wrap, but, uh, a cool project. If you ever wanted to get into it, um, you know, we, in the video that they, they put some painter's tape here, so you don't mar that up. I recommend it. It's a good idea. Well, wow, Perfect timing. Um, and you just work your way around. This snaps off really easy. If you just start in a corner, take your time, even pressure inside, outside. Um, and as you can see, same thing, just those little. You know, by this far, you've taken out so many of these that this piece is a, a breeze. And again, if you ever want a, a mod project, you can check out my other video where I wrap that piece. Kind of jazz it up. Uh, there are six of these T15 size Torx um, all around um, on the sides, two on the top, two down here. So that's another reason why you got to uh, take all that extra stuff off once you do that there are more of those uh, pressure fit tabs you would start on the top and again i already took mine off so that definitely watch the other video for the better pull mine was pre-done uh, but as you can see same thing 
Um, it tips back a little bit, obviously suspended by the wire right now. There is a tab on the bottom. Let me see if I can get a good camera angle of that. There's a little tab down here that goes into a little channel if you pull it out this far, which to be honest, you don't even have to. Once you tip this thing out, I would just leave that in. But if you do, for some reason, uh, accidentally or whatever, uh, take that out. Make sure you got that tab back in place. Just another another useful camera angle when you're doing this project. Um, here is the uh, 004, or e, I guess it's upside down, but AE004. So that was the previous generation. Um, I've got that one installed already. Uh, these tabs, how they are removed uh, from the stock. So basically stock is this red plug went into that hole and so you just jump it into the circuit pretty easy into the into the line obviously you're going to remove that one off to the driver's side but i got a better camera angle of this one so um what you got to do is you just lift that tab up and what it does is it gets out of the way so you can compress the actual tab that holds the socket in place so uh, once that's out of the way, you can push this, and then this whole thing comes straight up. But just make sure everything is nice and out of the way. Things line back up. Now is a great time to test to make sure it works. So we're going to start it up, see what happens, see what shows up on the little center info screen. I'm going to turn it off. As you can see, auto stop turned off. I didn't have to touch the button. That's really nice, okay? And, you know, functionality, still, I can still turn it on when I want it to, turn it off when I don't want it on, and off. Let me turn it back on. Again, not touching the button, boom, off. You know, it start, starts right away on that screen, gets out of the way right away, can't beat it. All right, so it's not quite as plug and play as you probably would like, but honestly, this wasn't that bad. It was kind of a fun project. Uh, their video was very thorough. It made me feel confident to do it. Uh, hopefully this video supplementing that makes you feel confident on where to pull, where not to pull. And when you're confident, this just goes faster. You know, it took me 30 minutes. I bet you guys could get it done in less. Um, and the end result is exactly what I wish this truck was like on day one, where I can choose whether to have the auto stop off by default or on by default. So uh, that's great. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments section. Was it this video that gave you the confidence? Was you know seeing the latest and greatest version thanks to getting that prototype from auto stop? You know, if I was on the fence thinking of whether I should get this or not, well, if they've refined the find the part, it's maybe that justifies waiting a little bit. So now's the time to buy. Uh, shout out to obviously Auto Stop for sending me that prototype, sending me the part, uh, letting me check all this out. I'm kind of a techie nerd guy, so seeing that piece that you guys are gonna get is before anybody else is is pretty sweet. So um, subscribe if you haven't. I got a lot more content coming. Uh, I actually today have a shipment coming uh, of my new cold air intake. So uh, Karen here is going to get some more power, baby. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Class dismissed.